Today, we're going to derive the kinematic equations. What are we doing? We're going to take three trains going down the tracks. Each of those trains is doing something slightly different. So we're going to graph the motion of those trains from these velocity versus time and position versus time graphs. We'll be able to derive the kinematic equations. Our first train is going to travel down the track with some initial velocity vi and that velocity is never going to change that means the acceleration is zero <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to graph the velocity versus time of this train for now we're going to say this train starts at a position of zero and moves along down the track at a constant velocity that we're calling vi, the initial velocity. Because acceleration is zero, that velocity is never going to change. So the velocity of the train is going to be constant. <laughs> On our velocity versus time graph, we would see a horizontal line. It's horizontal because it has an acceleration of zero. The velocity is never changing. If you're stuck on graphs, you need to go back through and watch my video on graphing up here. Because this train is moving with a constant velocity, the position is steadily increasing. So the position, which is initially zero, is going to steadily increase at a rate of V. On our graph, we'll see a diagonal line. That is a steadily increasing position. The slope of this line would be vi. Now in order to generate the kinematic equations, what I want to do is come up with an equation for each of these lines. In this case, the equation for this line, v as a function of t, as the velocity at any given point in time, is simply a constant vi. Looking at this as though we're in math class, the position as a function of time is going to be the slope of the line, that's vi, multiplied by t. What we're looking at is a slope-intercept form of a line. There is no intercept. I'll put plus zero here because the initial position is zero. Our next train is going to start at rest. but it is going to accelerate at some rate a. <laughs> we'll just say the acceleration is given by some value a. It could be any number we choose. Again, we can have this train start at a position of zero. Now our velocity versus time graph. It's gonna look a little bit different from the last train because this train is starting at rest. The initial value is going to be zero. But as time goes on, the train is going to accelerate. So this train is going to speed up. When we say the train is accelerating, we mean the velocity of the train is changing. In this case, it's increasing. On our position versus time graph, our train is going to start at a velocity of zero, which means initially we will see a slope of zero. But as time goes on and the velocity increases, there will be a larger and larger change in position with each second that goes by. What we'll see graphically here is as time goes by, the slope of this curve increases. Going back to our graphing rules, the slope on a position versus time graph is equal to velocity. So initially we should see zero velocity, but as time goes on, 
and velocity increases, we should see the slope of this line increase. Let's express each of these curves as a function. For velocity versus time, we'll see v of t is equal to not a constant like in the last problem. We'll see this is equal to a t plus zero. Just like in math class, we're using slope intercept where a is the slope and zero, our initial velocity, is the intercept. Over here, this is in fact a parabola. And in all of this, this is the only place where without calculus, we have to have a little bit of hand waving in order to accept what's going on. When we try to create this equation, x of t, this parabola is given by the equation 1 half at squared. Using calculus, we can see that this is the integral of this function here. But that is not something we need to concern ourselves with now. If you're just taking high school physics, this is a somewhat magically appearing term. All you need to understand is that as the velocity increases, the displacement increases exponentially. For our last train, let's again say this train starts at a position of zero. But I want to combine these two situations. That is to say, I want this train to start with some initial velocity vi. And I want this train to accelerate forward at some rate a that is not equal to zero. So to graph the motion of this train on our velocity versus time graph, we're gonna start with some initial velocity, vi, but that is then going to increase. So what we'll see is a diagonal line because the train is accelerating and that diagonal line starts at some initial velocity, vi. Now to write this as a function, we would see v of t is equal to at plus vi. Again, going back to math class, this is the slope-intercept expression for this line. On our position versus time graph, we're going to see something similar happen. Our position versus time is going to be expressed by 1 half at squared plus vi t. This equation would look like a parabola that starts with an initial slope and grows steeper as time goes on. Now let's look at what we've generated here. This equation can be used to describe any of these three situations. For example, in the first situation when acceleration was zero, if I was to plug in a value of zero right here, this entire equation would reduce down to our initial equation we had for the red train. If I was to plug in an initial velocity of zero, this would reduce down to the equation we had for the green train. So this equation can describe any of these three situations, which makes it extremely useful. Similarly over here, if I wanted to describe the motion of the red train using this equation, if you plug in zero here, this whole equation reduces down to that function there. If we want to reduce this down to the green function, we simply put in zero for vi. So again, this is very useful, but there's one thing that we've overlooked here. What happens if the initial position of these trains is not zero? If the initial position of the train is not zero, and they instead start at some initial position, we don't care what that value is. That's not gonna change our velocity functions at all. It will, however, change our position versus time functions. 
If I was to say this initial position was some positive value, it would shift all of these three functions upward to some initial position up here. That would change all three of these functions. We would effectively have to add in an initial term to all of these. So if we want to have a set of equations that will describe the motion of just about anything, this equation will adequately describe the velocity versus time, but this equation needs to include an initial position. So we rewrite it. This formula can be used to find the position versus time of any object moving with constant acceleration. This formula can be used to find the velocity versus time of any object moving with constant acceleration. We call these the kinematic equations. By looking at the three different trains, we were able to derive these two different equations. And we can manipulate these a little bit so that be they become a more useful set of equations. One thing we'll commonly see is this equation written slightly differently. This equation gives us position as a function of time. But if we were to subtract out the initial position from both sides, this is effectively final position. Initial being here, final minus initial gives us displacement. So commonly, we'll see this written as displacement simply equal to this term over here. This is what we call the displacement equation. Another kinematic equation we see is the combination of these two that factor out time. This equation looks at final velocity and initial velocity, and you'll notice this uses displacement rather than position. Our last equation is simply based on average velocity, and it tells us about displacement. This term in here, simply being the average velocity multiplied by time, is displacement. These are the kinematic equations. In our next video, we'll take a look at how to use them. That's all for now. Ciao, ciao.